everyone. Shout out to everybody in the chat. You guys, I apologize. I've been pushing this live. You know, other more pertinent lives I wanted to talk about came up. But this is definitely one that I really wanted to talk about. Shout out to everybody. It's been a busy day for me, so I had to push this live a couple of times. But shout out to everybody. I see Wim, Cash, who else? Chico. Uh, Wim, Chico uh, in, in SW, if you guys come to the Discord group, know that we are live. I completely forgot um that to let i let everybody on twitter know that we're live just not the discord group sorry y'all sorry uh when thank you for being here is it me me nate how do i say that me and quiv <laughs> you gonna have to help me say your name love i'm gonna say me shout out to me thank you thank you karma says at the time that I watched the Linda Stanley on Profiling Evil, and it didn't dawn on me that it was so unprofessional, surely this can't jeopardize this case. Oh, we're about to talk about that, okay? Um, we're going to get into that here in a minute. Hey, Perry. Hey, Bo. Hey, Kate. Erica, welcome. Oh, my gosh. All my beautiful, wonderful people. Chico's in the chat. Messy, beautiful ball. Um... Hey, Jamie, thank you for the email. I got it. I'm, I got it. I'm going to look into it, love. ADAS is here. I'm ready for the story in Justice for Suzanne. Nebulous, thank you for being here. Hi, Sierra. Welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here. Um, Eric, oh, well, thank you. I got my avocado shirt on today. Look, it's avocados. Shout out to the, shout out to the avocados. Um, Just the sub is here. Kimmy, Talia, Shauna B., Oh, man. Jenny, junk journal book lover. Welcome, love. And thank you for being a member. Cheeks is in the house as well. Sandra, thank you, Sandra. San not Sandra, Sandra. Okay, pronounce me native cutie. Ah, see, girl, I... Shout out to me native cutie. Thank you. Thank you, love. Thank you. If, thank you for, if I don't know how to pronounce it and I ask you, don't take offense to it. I just don't want to, like, you know murder your name if that makes sense nebulous thank you for being here hey brianna i really like mike i would hate to find out that he messed up on this badly we're going to talk about that and i promise you you love avocados <laughs> this is not to uh shade mr mike king from profiling evil but this is a huge story and i'm a little like we uh, you know i came in doing true crime a little bit later um I hate to say it that way because I was in a different sector, but I was like, damn, I wish I would have gone into true crime sooner. I just, you know, I just didn't. Uh, Miss Amber, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You love the avocado, it's the avocado shirt today. Great. Now, every time I wear y'all going to call me out for the avocados. It's the avocado shirt today. Thank you. Ooh, how you do the mushroom. Lord have mercy. That mushroom case. They arrested that lady, didn't they? Mm hmm. I did ask the question if it was like intentional. I mean, I don't know. Everybody's got their opinions. People say that it was an accident. I'm like, how do you accidentally cook? Po how do you not get poisoned and everybody else dies from your mushrooms? I don't know, man. Meanwhile, I hate avocados. You hate avocados? <laughs> I love avocados. Um, I didn't always like avocados, though, but I do now. All right. Um, I know you go brand yourself. Chico, the one that hates avocados. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about it. So this news broke out of Colorado, and this is pretty big news because I'm trying to figure out, and I, I'm not a legal expert, of course, but I'm just giving commentary to this. How does this impact the Suzanne Morphew case? Okay, keep that in mind. We're going to read this article, and then we're going to watch a little bit of Profiling Evil's interview. Now, I, Linda Stanley, D.A. Stanley has um spoken on profiling evil a couple of times in various like there's a lot of lives that she's done with that channel and i know mr mike king is like a former law enforcement officer so i am a little bit like surprised that it's come to this where we're at right now what they're doing right now but let's read this article and you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments about this whole situation. So state recommends discipline against DA Linda Stanley alleges she violated seven rules of conduct for attorneys. So this is out of Fremont County, Colorado. Shout out to everybody from the CO. In a public document obtained by KRDO 13 Investigates, the Colorado Office of Attorney Regula uh, Regulation Council 
a state body that disciplines attorneys is recommending the 11th Judicial District Attorney, Linda Stanley, be appropriately disciplined for such misconduct. The document filed the presiding disciplinary judge, uh, Byron Large, claims that DA Stanley violated seven rules of professional conduct for attorney by speaking publicly, look at this, by speaking publicly about multiple open criminal cases, including that of Barry Morphew. Okay. Violating mandatory evidence disclosure to defense attorneys and attempting to investigate a sitting judge without criminal evidence backing it up. Ooh. So the KRDO 13 investigates confirmed that DA Stanley was under state investigation in October of 2022. There was there have been several complaints filed against her to the uh, OARC by defense attorneys, concerned citizens, and even law enforcement over the past year. Now, nearly a year after the investigation was opened, the, the OARC is taking action. The 20-page complaint begins with allegations. Look at this. I'm a all right, I'm going to read it. So so those that follow the, the YouTube channel, I, I'm wondering if he's going to make a statement about this. The 20-page complaint begins with allegations that D.A. Stanley made statements to a YouTuber named Mike King, who runs an operated profiling evil page. Her statements via key in private text message and during an appearance on his YouTube channel or on a YouTube page, all over around, all center around her criminal case against Morphew, the Chafee County man previously accused of killing his wife, Suzanne Morphew. No, that's not good. And and some of these interviews are still up. Um, They're still up. Right, this is like day one. So this is why I don't, well, first of all, there were, some of them were private messages. Um, how did they obtain those private messages? I'd like to know. Like, did did I, I'm kind of curious. But is this going to cause Suzanne Morphew like the case? What if they were looking at, and I don't know if they still are, because I'm not really sure. Barry Morphew as a prime, because he's still a prime. My understanding, he has not been like ruled out or you know exit out of that whole situation. What is this going to mean for? The case. The lady, uh, I believe, had her license removed. Okay. So what now? And it was interesting because I did see, I, I got the interview up. We're going to watch it. We're going to give commentary to it. Absolutely. Yes, we are. However, I'm kind of curious to know, like, what happened? You have a, somebody who's formal law enforcement, and then you have a DA. What communication? First of all, why would a DA do that? whether he's a YouTuber or not, or best friend or former law enforcement, like, do people not keep, do attorneys talk too much or what's going on? Yeah, she's married, right, Craig? She is married. But like, what what was the bulge in those messages? Because all of this made it to their regulatory offices. Did the board have the subpoena authority? They'd have to have, right, right, Brianna, they've had to have gotten it. For them to have named the channel, the YouTube channel, Profiling Evil, and this is, Profiling Evil is a big channel, okay? A lot of professionals go up there. You know, the guy's got a lot of connects, but I really, really kind of worry. CCR, this is what I worry. Suzanne deserves absolutely justice. Hopefully they find her a fresh, well, a fresh DA, right? Uh, fresh new eyes to the investigation. Because it, it does worry me, but I'm just trying to figure out, like, I know a lot of attorneys. I have a lot of great attorney friends, but I don't want my attorney friends to tell me anything about their cases. Like I ain't trying, I don't want to know. If, if I could be subpoenaed and I have to testify, I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Because I ain't trying to leave my house to go to some courthouse to go sit there and be subpoenaed and be questioned by a disgruntled attorney and then sit. And I ain't trying to do that, right? You would think that a DA, okay, would know better? I don't know. Really, just Steph, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. 
hey, don't look back. Welcome, welcome. Um, you you just kind of have to wonder. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, so let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. The 20 page complaint, we read that. Her statements to the king, to King via private text messages and during an appearance on his YouTube page all center around her criminal case against Barry Morphew, the Chafee County man previously accused of killing his wife, Suzanne Morphew. On May 15, 2021, the OARC says Stanley replied to King via text message after he asked her for more information on the weapon Barry Morphew was accused of using to killing his wife. A request to which Stanley responded by saying, um, I will see what I can do only because it's you, Mike. Ooh, 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 ooh. I will see what I, so they were text messaging, okay? They were going like this. I'll see what I can do only because it's you, Mike. That's how they were. Did she really think she wasn't going to get caught up only because it's you, Mike? That that's what I I don't know. That's a great question. But it's so crazy that it's somebody here on YouTube, right? I heard that he's got a little like um connect connect. You already know we don't mess with adventures with purpose. I'm just saying. Shout out to Hero. Okay. MK is how I found out about AWP. I was hoping for a video addressing Jared or that MK was not aligning himself with Jared. A. You ain't going to get that. It's been, I think it's going to be a year this month when we all found out about what happened. And that's a great question. But I was hoping that he was going to like address these allegations because if you're former law enforcement and you know, that's the thing is like, he's got a huge YouTube channel, right? Um, he would probably be one of the ones that I would be watching some of his content to understand like what's going on in a case, you know, get his take. I mean, I love, I love to see former law enforcement do YouTube channels because I feel like I get, it's like a free college course or, or something. You know what I'm saying? When I can get some knowledge from somebody that's former, like I think of duty Ron. Duty Ron, I love watching Duty Ron stuff because I feel like I'm at my undergraduate class when I'm listening to him talking and yada, yada, yada. But to see this, yeah, I mean, you would have to think he would pick and choose. He would pick and choose. So did all of this, I'll see what I can do, Mike, yada, yada, yada business. Is that going to be a hindrance to justice for Suzanne Morphew? Like, how are you not addressing this? A month later, when King texted Stanley about new evidence in the case, she replied to him stating, I'm great, thanks. We got him. No worries. <gasps> in reference to the ongoing murder case against Morphew. Wow. So a month later, King test Mr. Mike King texted Linda Stanley about new evidence on the case. And she replied to him saying, I'm great. Thanks. We got him. No worries. That's what she said. So, wow. It's interesting. Interesting to know. And this was in reference to the ongoing murder of Mur uh, against Morphew. Uh, after a preliminary hearing was held to determine if there was enough evidence to go on or to go to a potential trial, King test texted Stanley feeling good to which Stanley replied yes only because the judge has basically indicated that he's done that's good for us wow so she was giving the the deets to profiling evil she was they were breaking rules and stuff mm, 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 mm. No, that's not good. It's not good at all. Just saying. It's not. Then King asked Stanley if Morphew stared her down in court during the preliminary hearing. And Stanley replied, I stared him down. I have, try I have tried to every single day. Wow. Look at that. Not good. No bueno. No bueno. Interesting. 
MK said he took a break from press only to to soon after him on to only too soon after him after find him on court TV with Vinny Politan. Okay, from okay, gotcha. I know it's a mess. What a mess! You can't do this right. But cheeks, it's this is your DA, right? This is the crazy part. So your DA will align themselves with YouTube creators, like not your DA, but I'm just saying this is a DA. The DA is for the people, right? The DA is for you know the state and 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 you know uh, the citizens, right? It, it can, Chico. You are so right about that. And Wim, thank you for gifting five memberships. Thank you so much for being awesome and supporting my channel. Congrats to the new members. Yay! If you got a membership from Wim, please put a heart in the chat, okay? As a thank you. Thank you, thank you, Wim. Um. It is a rabbit hole. No pun intended, but it is a rabbit hole. Okay. So they, they have this little text exchange about staring him down. A few days later, on August 30th, 2021, Stanley appeared on King's YouTube channel and discussed portions of the ongoing criminal case against Morphew, including responding to comments made by viewers that solidify her beliefs that she would be able to convict Morphew of murder despite it being a nobody murder case. At that time, Suzanne Morphew's remains were not found. So she was already like, yo, DAs, don't be appearing on YouTube channels when your case is still ongoing. What made you like what made this lady even do this? Seriously. The OARC alleged that the case against Morphew changed venues from Chafee County to Fremont County because of Stanley's extra judicial statements made to various YouTubers before the case went to trial, a violation of an attorney rule of professional conduct that bars attorneys from making out-of-court statements about an ongoing criminal investigation. The complaint then enters into allegations that Stanley and her team of prosecutors was having extreme difficulty complying with uh, Crim P16 mandatory disclosures in a timely manner in the Morphew case, the complaint states. The Crime P16 mandatory disclosures have to do with prosecutors' uh, obligations to hand over evidence to defense attorneys in any criminal case within 21 days of the case being charged. From there, there are other deadlines uh, from handing over evidence before a potential trial that are not optional, but rather required by state law. The OARC outlines the numerous evidentiary pieces tied to the Morphew case that Stanley is accused of withholding from his defense attorney, Iris Ethan. I think that's how you said Ethan. Those items include a cell phone, cell phone data, other electronic discovery, DNA swabs from Miss Morphew's Range Rover, which partially match an unknown suspect who was being investigated for sexual assault, and a witness list that would be on the prosecution's list to testify in the future trial against Barry Morphew. So this could, uh, this, could this cause a mistrial? If this case, if there is no justice for Suzanne Morphew, y'all can thank this attorney here, okay? She didn't hand. It, it, did you hear that, Craig? Right. Sexual assault of an unknown suspect. They they are sitting on that and they didn't even have that, whether you believe Barry Morphew is guilty or not. But the man still needs a defense regardless. Right. Because that's how court works. But. This lady did the most. So she's hold, withholding evidence. And this isn't the only case she did this on, by the way, there were other cases. But this one was the biggest one for Fremont County. OK. This is this was a pretty big case it is a pretty big case. The handling and mishandling of this case. If that man walks, y'all can take D.A. Stanley. OK. Mm hmm. I wouldn't trust that D.A. if she has loose lips and shady shit. Right. Um, Mike King is not a lawyer. He's a former law enforcement. He's former law enforcement. We're going to watch that interview here in a minute. Oh, my God, they had time to give interviews to YouTubers so not to file their disclosures on time. This cannot be real, right, love? You tell them. They got time to do interviews, okay, joke around. Listen, she was, she, they have this, like, segment. I think it's called the church choir or some shit like that. 
She had time to sit there and do church choir stuff while there's stuff that needed to be handed over to the defense, to the court, to file this stuff. Just saying. Oh, this definitely any right, Chico is watch. Watch. <laughs> like, I just don't know how I don't know. But anyways. So whew, we all right, let's get into it. So, so, so the uh, OARC noted that there that these discoveries violations resulted in 15 of the 16 prosecution witnesses being excluded from testifying at future trials against Barry Morphew. Days later, Stanley's office filed a motion to dismiss all of the charges against Morphew without prejudice, meaning they could be refiled in the future if new evidence came to light. The majority of the aforementioned allegations were known to the public, but a new detail outlined the complaint center around Stanley's alleged efforts to have for, for, former Fremont County District Judge Ramsey Lama investigated for domestic violence after adverse rulings in the Morphew case once it was moved to Fremont County. This, this, so, so she got mad that the district judge, Ramsey Lama, was making some rulings. So what she decides to do is to get people to investigate the judge for domestic violence so that she can come back and have something to say about him. I'm just, I cannot. I am just clutching my pearls. Right. Hey, how how are you? True crime for you. Welcome, welcome. I I really I hope it doesn't, Kitty Koo. Like that. I'm sure the guy is a like I said. I'm sure the channel is a great channel. I mean, clearly he's got a lot of supporters. But this was not a good thing to do, and I don't think he's ever going to like address it. I think he should. His name is being mentioned. It was mentioned in the court's filings. Okay. So I'm a little like, yeah, I am clutching my pearls, love. I'm clutching my invisible pearls. I really am. Okay. The complaint says that Stanley uh, enlisted the help of her investigator, Andrew Corey, to investigate Lama for abusing his ex-wife, Iris Lama. This came after Stanley allegedly asked members of Chaffee County Sheriff's Office to investigate Lama, to which they refused because there's no good source for the investigation. So she gets mad at the judge, and then she tells um, her primary investigator, go investigate the judge. That's what, that's what, that, that was her response to that. After Corey interviewed Judge Lama's ex-wife, and he moved forward with it. Look at this shit. He reported to Stanley that she stated there was never any domestic abuse in their relationship, and that Judge Lama never said anything to her about the Morphew case. Four days later, Stanley moved to dismiss all of the charges against Barry Morphew. The complaint states the uh, OARC claims Stanley violated the following rules of professional conduct for attorneys. A, a lawyer shall act with reasonable diligence and promptness, pre-trial pre publicity, prosecutors extrajudicial comments, responsibility of supervisory lawyer, attempt to violate the rule of professional conduct and conduct prejudicial to the administration of justice, uh, pretrial publicity, and prosecutors' extrajudicial comments. Wow. The last two, pretrial publicity and extrajudicial comments, allege stems from an on-camera interview Stanley gave to KRDO 13 Investigates in July 2023 about the death of a 10-year-old, a 10-month-old child in Canyon City and subsequent murder case filed against William Jacobs. In the interview, Stanley told KRDO 13 investigates that Jacob was the baby's mother, Brooke Crawford, so he could get laid, adding that the baby was a pain in the ass because there was no care or love for the child. Wow. Whew. The OARC claimed Stanley violated the rules because she knew that her comments would have been dis disseminated by means of public uh, communication and would have substantial substantial likelihood of materialing pre, uh, what is it uh, prejudicing and uh, adjunctive proceeding in the Jacob and Crawford matter in the the complaint states 
Mm, 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 mm. The complaint asks for D.H. Stanley to be disciplined for this alleged misconduct and, and, and to be required to take any other remedial actions appropriate under the circumstances and be assessed costs associated with the case against her. This is so freaking like, wow. 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 You gonna buy some pearls tomorrow? <laughs> Shout out to you. I know. I know, right? I just cannot. Y'all are clutching your pearls. I'm like, it's good, good to see you. All right. Let's get to that interview so we could talk about it because this is at least one. Now, this interview, this is the channel. I mean, he's got 176K subs, okay? This is a pretty big channel. And Mr. Mike King is a former law enforcement. Um, he's written books. So this interview is from August 30th of 2021. And um, it starts at the, about the 32-minute mark. It doesn't go very, very long. So we're going to watch. And I mean, you, this is part of the reasons, aside from the private messages, this is why some of the discipline is occurring, okay? Let me know your thoughts in the comments if she's saying too much and what are your thoughts? To do, do so. And folks, I'm, we have here 11th Judicial District Attorney Linda Stanley. She was elected last fall and started her uh, term of office in January of this year. And uh, I know of at least three major murders that you've uh, brought to the trial process. And uh, I just uh, want to say how impressive it is to watch you and your team of prosecutors and investigators as you jump in. There are, as you might undoubtedly expect, so many questions about the Morphew case and about the judicial process that I wanted to just get on with you, Linda, for a few minutes and talk about some of those things and get your perspective. And, uh, and maybe just start right out of the gates about something that's really bothering people. Um, I, I did a video last week on uh, whether some of these things that are happening are coincidence or whether they're circumstantial, trying to somehow get across the point of how tough and yet how powerful circumstantial cases are. What's the difference between direct evidence and circumstantial evidence? Well, most cases that go to trial are gonna be circumstantial. If you think about it, if we have a video of somebody doing something that's illegal or witnesses that saw him do it, then it's probably gonna take a plea offer. It's not gonna to go to trial. And so mm -hmm. most cases that go to trial are gonna be circumstantial. And I did send a jury instruction to you that I've used in every trial. It's part of our jury instruction list. And that is the difference between direct and circumstantial evidence. There's no difference between the two. So a jury. So she was sending him material about how they handle cases and whatnot. Keep that in mind. Maybe that was part of their communication. Um, like she was, this is part of that, that he, he was sharing on the channel. I don't necessarily think that this might be a like a big deal, but I mean, it sounds like th this is just some of the material that she was sharing with them. You can decide based on circumstantial evidence only whether or not somebody is guilty in trial. They don't need direct evidence. And in fact, there's no distinction between the two on how much weight they have in court. So it's important to remember that. No, there's not necessarily witnesses or anything like that. But frankly, that's why we're here. If there were witnesses to stuff, we probably wouldn't be here at a prelim. That that is really interesting, and I, I you know I, I read over this, and I've tried to describe this and explain it before in the past, but I, I loved this piece of jury instruction. Direct evidence, I'm quoting, is based on firsthand observation of the fact in question. For example, it says a witness's testimony that he looked out the window and saw the snow falling might be offered as direct evidence that it had snowed. So right. then, help me understand circumstantial with that same kind of situation. Actually, I used um, a question like that about snow, or if I have a lot of golfers on the jury panel, I'll use golfing. But um, but I always say something like, um, if it's not the winter time, obviously, but um, what the temperature is, no, no expectation of any precipitation at all. And you get up in the morning and look outside and there's snow all over your front yard. Would you be able to come to the conclusion that it snowed last night, despite all the other things you were told to the contrary? Would you say, oh my gosh, it snowed last night? Or would you think somebody brought a big... So this is her explanation of direct evidence versus circumstantial. So direct is firsthand observation of the fact in question. For example, a witness testimony that he looked outside the window and saw snow falling might be offered as direct evidence that it had snowed. Uh, circumstantial is indirect. It is based on observations of related facts that may lead you to reach a conclusion about the fact in question. For example, a witness testimony that he looked out the window and saw 
snow covering the ground might be offered as circumstantial evidence than that it had snowed. Remember, but around this time, um, there was the issue of, well, there's no body and they're moving forward to charge Barry Morphew. You pick up a snow and dumped it on your front yard or, you know, come up with any of the other reasons. And most people say, no, it, it's no okay, form of go. evidence. No, I'm moving forward. So so as you as you're putting together a case of this magnitude and you're trying to glue all of these pieces together, uh, how do you orchestrate all of that so that it actually paints a picture that someone can see in their mind and say that makes sense? Well, it's difficult, obviously. Um, you know, we got the case uh, the day that we arrested him. So that's Talk when the DA's Barry office Morphew. starts to get everything that all the investigators have done. And that includes FBI, CBI, Sheriff's Office, et cetera. So they start giving us all the evidence. Until that time, like when I said in the press conference that I met with them a couple of different times, we were given key points of stuff, but not everything. So we have to review everything. And we're talking about several terabytes of evidence, obviously, as you heard. Um, it's a lot because it was a year investigation. Um, many, many search warrants, lots and lots of tips that have to be looked into. So it's a lot. So when we're presenting something in a prelim, we're presenting the stuff that we believe will get to the point of probable cause. Uh, that's that's something. You know, I I uh, today I did a, a uh, podcast with Nancy Grace and uh, former prosecutor. And, and uh, she said, now, are you sure you want to do this? Because people are going to yell at you for being on with me. And I just laughed and said, people yell at me when people are on with me. So, but Nancy said something I thought that was really interesting. She said, it would be interesting to know the choice that was made between a grand jury and a preliminary hearing. But why, why don't you describe some of that process of how you decide which direction you're going to go? Sure. Um, and people are mad at me all the time too. So <laughs> come on in. The water's fine. Um, <laughs> There's never been a grand jury in this district. I found that out after I was elected, actually. Uh, we did uh, want to do a grand jury for this case. However, because of COVID protocols, we weren't able to. So we had to try to get enough evidence for an arrest affidavit, hmm. um, enough probable cause to get that, that a judge would sign off on, and we did. So that's why we didn't do the grand jury. But I agree that I think it would have been a good grand jury case. Yeah, yeah, that would. And, and um, why would a grand jury be more... Um streamlined than the process that you just went through a preliminary hearing? Well, I like a grand jury because a grand jury is just common folk, basically kind of like a jury itself. So, and they only indict a ham sandwich as everybody says, but um, I think it's important um, for that reason. You have common people that are there to make a decision. So, and, and I think that's kind of an important thing to me too, that I've always found with a grand jury is you as a prosecutor are having to appeal to a jury of what would be called peers versus in a preliminary hearing, you're arguing to a legal expert that's sitting on the bench that's seen it all. Correct. Yeah, she did about three different interviews. This one is only talking about generalities, right? Some of it. You have to kind of like, and let me let me tell you guys something. I actually pulled up, shout out to um, the docket who posted on Twitter six hours ago. Let me show you guys this. The... Um, document, the actual court document uh, against Linda Stanley. Okay. This is it right here. And it, it names profiling evil. Okay. And let me show you guys. I'm going to try to go directly to it. Um, here it is on May uh, 18, 2021, the respondent DDA Lindsay filed a complaint and information which lists the official charges against Barry Morview as one count of first degree murder, one count of tampering with deceased human body, one count of tampering with physical evidence, possession of a dangerous weapon, excuse me, and one count of attempted influence of a public servant. Okay. So this is just a little bit and names Morphew. Mor the, the Morphew case was highly publicized and hundreds of community members participated in their own searches for Suzanne Morphew. Respondent was aware of Suzanne Morphew's investigation prior to becoming a district attorney on January 12th of 2021. So she wasn't in office. I thought she was already in office. Well, because no, she went missing a Mother's Day of 20. Yeah, 2020. So she came in office in January. Yes, kid, you're right. Um, yeah, even if they only talk generalities, I think it's dumb to even potentially jeopardize the case, especially as professionals. Well, Jamie, and even then, what the community they had communication with each other via text, okay? And so I'm only showing you portions of that interview so you guys can check it out, watch it, and let me know your thoughts. But it was that specific interview, and 
subsequent, you know, appearances that really um, messed this whole situation up. Like, and it makes me wonder, how is any of this, look at this, how is any of this going to impact the investigation, Suzanne Morphew getting any justice? And and really, like Chico said, this could this be cause for a mistrial? Respondent statements to press and influencers started early and continued. See, they had this. They said, listen, you fucked around and found out. Look at that. Uh, from April 2021 to August 2022, respondent was in contact via text message with Mike King, host of the Profiling Evil YouTube channel. They got the YouTube channel up in there. Okay. On these documents. They, they said, no, nope, no. Nope. You were up there. Mike King is part of the global network of true crime broadcasters and influencers, and his YouTube channel discusses true crime. It's called Profiling Evil. The respondent frequently updated King and re responded to his request for information about the Morphew case. On May 3rd, 2021, respondent exchanged text messages, uh, text messages and had a phone call with King regarding the Morphew case. On May 5th, 2021, the same day, Walker submitted an arrest affidavit to the court for Morphew's arrest. Respondent attended a press conference along with Sheriff John Speezy, or Spezzy, I think that's how you say that, in response to question about whether Morphew was cooperating with the investigation and whether Morphew was asked if, she, if he knew where the body was, Respondent told the media. So he, she was talking to the media when she wasn't supposed to. Sorry, guys. Just had somebody at my door. Okay. He was taken into custody, and when asked questions, he said he wanted a lawyer, and all questioning ended. On May 15, 2021, when Mike King of Prof Profiling Evil texted responded, asking her for more information about the short rifle Barry Morphew allegedly used to kill Suzanne Morphew, as had been identified in the complaint, Respond replied, um, I will see what I can do only because it's you, Mike. So she was talking to profiling evil when she wasn't supposed to be. Your DA is not supposed to be disclosing this shit to anybody, let alone Mike. And this is why I was like, well, wait a minute. Um, he's former law enforcement. And one thing that he said in that interview several times, he said, you know, I'm not going to put her in a, in a predicament where, you know, things are going to get disclosed. We got to respect the law. Yada, 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 yada. Respect the law. But he knew, he knew stuff about the case that only those that would, you know, there for the case would know. This also means we don't know how much of what Mike told us about this case was his own. Yep. I'm so, exactly. Like, was it his own conclusion or how much was it fact? given by her that he and he and we should never have been given exactly it was her participation with interviews with media with profiling evil that yo like this woman may never get justice like this is this is just insanity to me that they would go this far to do that and it, it, and I'm not the only one who has noted that there are other, I, you know, there's other YouTube channels that have called this out too, um, much bigger than I am. Absolutely. But you're named in a complaint by a regulatory agency that disciplines attorneys. You don't get on that shit for, for fun shits and giggles, you know? Yeah, he knows, but he's former law enforcement. He knows better right? Interviewers will ask anything. It's the responsibility of the person being interviewed to use discretion. Right. Right. Respect my ass. She overstepped the lines. Right. I need to go back to rewatch because my kids keep interrupting me, ADAS. <laughs> Shout out to ADAS. Um, he, she should have known better, right? I mean, the media will ask you questions. It doesn't mean that you, even if it's Mike, okay? Just because it's you, Mike. What? Only because it's you, Mike. When King text, texted, responded, and asked if her, if 
asked her if perhaps Mr. Morphew strangled. Look, he was even asking her if she had been strangled in the hot tub. Respondent replied, we know it wasn't bloody. The hot tub was drained with crust around the drain area, indicating it had not been used in a long time. But keep on spinning ideas in your brain. When King texted, responded, and asked her about Suzanne's Morpheus car keys, responded, replied, we think she always left her purse in the car. So I'm pretty sure while Mr. Mike King was giving commentary to his Suzanne Morphew videos, maybe he was giving commentary to what the DA was telling him, right? Yes. He has years of experience under his belt, and this isn't a teenager. Gossip chat, right? Man, look at these shows, ask certain shit. I don't know. I, that's what I'm saying, but, like, it's like accountability on both. Why would you ask her that? Yo, they got your text. They subpoenaed your text messages. They got a hold of your uh, her phone, her text messages. Everything was taken. So the communication between her and whatever other bloggers were communicating is very much concerning, right? On June 2021, when King texted, responded to comment about a new video on Barry Morphew, responded, replied, I'm great, thanks. We got him. No worries. Meanwhile, the prosecution struggles with its discovery obligations. So meanwhile, while she's over here uh, connecting with YouTubers, you know, commenting and just because it's you, Mike, she ain't even doing her job on the discovery phase of this case. She's failing. They couldn't get her to submit her shit timely, her, her team. Within the few months after Morphe's arrest, respondent was made aware by Lindsay and other staff that her office was having extreme difficulty complying with the crime P-16 mandatory. We read that earlier. Respondent was aware that Salida office, Chafee County, did not have enough bandwidth to send a defense counsel large amount of electronic discovery, data, videos, and photos via the Action 5 system in a timely manner. Morpheus Defense filed a motion to compel for sanctions because uh, the prosecution failed to timely disclose all the information of Morpheus as required by Crim R-16. On June 3rd, 2021, Judge Murphy issued an order in response to defendant discovery motion. motion okay. And it says the defense request for all emails, text messages between law enforcement officers and all individuals, including prosecutors, uh, contacted pertaining to this case is too broad and is not and is not required by case law or statute. Therefore, it is ordered that any electronic communication created or received by law enforcement officers related to this case must be disclosed to the defense if they are material to the prosecution of the case or if they contain any evidence that would be in any way favorable to the defense. On July 20th, 2021, prosecutors disclosed on May 19, 2021, the CODIS DNA casework match letter containing potential exculpatory information, which the prosecution had in its possession for two months prior to disclosure. So they're sitting on stuff that was supposed to be turned in and they ain't do shit, but they're over here contacting my king. I cannot. I cannot. I uh, wow, that's crazy, right? Is it just me, or do I, I, like is this crazy? <laughs> so the judge Murphy determined that the prosecution had violated discovery rules by not complying complying timely, providing cell phone data, electronic discovery for the defense. And that's what happened around that time in July of 2021. Between July 2020, uh, 22 to July, August 22nd of 2021, the prosecutor should disclose a significant amount of information to the defense. Uh, number one, temp CODIS letter match dated 10 2220, and a Phoenix CODIS match letter date November uh, 19 of 2020, and more CODIS matches. In August 2021, Lindsay contacted Dan Edwards, who at that time was not employed by the district attorney's office to assist with motions 
practice in the prosecution of Barry Morphew. So they couldn't handle their shit in the prosecution's office. They had to contact other people that aren't even in the office to help with the Barry Morphew case. Help me understand. Uh, Sheriff Speezy was able to obtain help on the Morphy prosecution by obtaining 100000 from the Chaffee County Commissioner's Office. So they're getting money from the Commissioner's Office to help with this prosecution. Meanwhile, she's still over here doing choir practice, choir practice with uh, Profiling Evil. I make, I'm not making this shit up. Hold up. Let me show you guys. Okay. Uh, here it is. You see this thumbnail right here? It says choir practice. Choir practice. That's what they that that's code word for I'll see you at the bar. I remember them talking about that when I was reviewing some of their videos. There is too many wrongs. Right. They were too busy watching. <laughs> right. I'm listen, I I'm just I'm delivering what it says, okay? So they're they're having a hard time. Respondent goes on to profiling evil after show uh, the PEPG hearing on August 24th of 2020, uh, August 24th through the 25th. So August 24th and 25th of 2021, two days, the last two days of the PEPG hearing, defense cross-examined former CBI agent Cahill regarding the CODIS DNA casework match. Interesting. So she has time to go on, you know, on this uh, YouTube channel. So then on August 24th, during the third day of the hearing, Mike King texted, responded the question, feeling good? And responded, replied, yes, only because the judge has basically indicated that he's done and that's good for us. Uh, later on August 24th, King tested, re texted, responded, now the noise. I heard defendant tried to stare you down this morning. This is what we read earlier. And she said to him, no, I stared him down. I've tried to stare him down every single day. On August 29th, King and responded, uh, discussed via text message and phone, what King would say to his audience about the Morphew case and what King would say to his audience about respondent. So he's over here consulting about the audience and the people and stuff like that. Yeah, came back. Oh, wow. Right? Right. Definitely. Anyways, I'm going to stop right here because I got to go tend to baby bunny. But I definitely wanted to give you guys an idea of how big of a deal this is. This is a big deal. And this could definitely for whether things get prosecuted, what gets done, whether there will be any justice in this situation. Murder cases now. Like this is the insane to me. Presided over the Barry Morphew murder case is now accusing the district attorney of investigating his family, the judge's family, in an act of retaliation for. And his she ruling. did this. Ramsey Lama is no longer a judge, so he's able to speak freely. He gave the first interview of his life to our Mark Salinger. My name is Linda Stanley. I'm the district attorney for the 11th Judicial District. There is no more powerful prosecutor in Chafee, Fremont, and Custer counties than Linda Stanley. For me. Today is a good day. When she brought murder charges against Barry Morphew in the 2020 case of his missing wife, Stanley stood outside her office in Salida, pledging to play by the rules. That we cannot talk about any open or active investigation, and that is per the rules of professional conduct oh. that we will abide by. Two years later. The right, right. But it's okay to talk to profiling evil. And they had, the, listen, they got the text messages. He can't say it didn't happen. Rules she followed. Let us hear. I don't think um, she's competent for that position. Uh, and I say that based on my experience being a judge here. Ramsey Lama was the judge that presided over the Morphew case in Fremont County. Today, he's speaking publicly for the first time after leaving the bench last year. I think the public needs to know who Linda Stanley is and mm. what she did in that case to a sitting judge presiding over a case. Wow. They need to know that. A complaint filed by the Attorney Regulation Council to the Colorado Supreme Court, along with police reports, corroborate Lama's allegations. It starts with, of all things, a YouTube video made during the Morphew trial. Some YouTuber in a bulletproof vest appeared on video, essentially threatening me and doxing me and my family, uh, asking me to get off the case. A Lama judge. Says it was full of unfounded conspiracy theories. Including a judge. Y'all see that? Putting a claim that he abused his ex-wife. Totally crazy. Um, never abused my ex-wife, just baseless. And of course, he's in a uh, bulletproof vest, and he's looking at the camera saying, Judge Lama, you better get off or more is coming. Court filings suggest District Attorney Stanley 
saw that video too. In the complaint filed with the Supreme Court, it alleges Stanley asked a commander at the Chafee County Sheriff's Office to investigate the allegation of domestic abuse launched in the YouTube video. The commander refused, saying there was no evidence to base it off of, according to the complaint. Stanley is quoted telling investigators she believed the allegations against Lama also influenced his rulings in court. My ex-wife was followed. Uh, strangers were appearing at her church, following her to a playground with, with our son, asking, hey, tell us about Judge Lama and your marriage. Was he abusive? Did he beat you? We're trying to get him off the case. After law enforcement declined to investigate Lama, he says someone showed up at his ex-wife's house asking her about the allegations from the YouTube video. Court filings show police and sheriff's deputies say it wasn't them. Then Lama says he got a call from the police chief in Canyon City. And he informed me, you know, <laughs> you're going to need to sit down for this one, Judge. I said, okay. Mm. And uh, they got information that it was a district attorney investigator who contacted my ex-wife to interview her about our marriage. While the Barry Morphy case is pending, while I am the sitting judge on the case. So she didn't like what the ruling was. And... That's what had to happen. Mr. Craig, I'm going to have to, like, block you and delete you. Please don't leave me your number. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all doing the most. That happened. District Attorney Stanley ended up dropping charges against Morphew. Lama <laughs> does not mince words on what he believes Stanley's intent was. Uh, I think an elected official who's the top prosecutor uh, using investigative resources, taxpayer dollars, to mm -hmm. investigate a judge um, on nothing, totally baseless. Uh, because they didn't like their rulings, that's scary. That and is I scary. Think if you're engaging in that kind of conduct, you have no business being a DA. The uh, question was, Mr. Mike King, this is the woman that was doing all that. Okay, like I, I'm just like I cannot believe that this is okay that y'all allowed this. If like this crazy. I suspect Mr. Morphew had answered any of our questions or told us where. Suzanne Morphew's body is. We reached out to Stanley repeatedly over the past two days with questions about Lama's allegations. We have not yet heard back. She now faces the complaint in the Supreme Court. Lama wants to see her lose her law license. Using resources in that manner, clearly designed to intimidate a judge, uh, or if it was for retribution, it's, it's so wrong. An elected prosecutor versus a judge. That's what this day is about, and it's a good day. Thank you. Which Lama says should never happen. I don't think there's any room for that in Fremont County or anywhere in Colorado. Or, or the whole country as a whole shouldn't be happening. The complaint filed with the Supreme Court also alleges that Stanley withheld information from defense attorneys while instead sharing that information Crazy. with true crime podcasters and YouTubers. The long list of complaints against her could end with her losing her law license. We also reached out to former Judge Lama's ex-wife to corroborate the story through her, but did not hear back. I truly have never heard of anything like this before. I've heard of situations where parties to a case and conspiracy theorists might target a judge, but the idea of, of prosecutors targeting a judge, and he really did fear for himself and his family. Yeah, during those preliminary hearings, former Judge Lama had police outside of his home. He had police oh my escorts God. just to get to the courthouse, Kyle. That's how serious they took this. All right, Mark Salinger. Very interesting. Thank you, Mark. She needs to lose her, she needs to lose her license. That's just, yeah, she needs to, absolutely. I'll see what I can do for you, Mike, only because it's you. But anyways, what do I know? Um, I will see you guys on the next one. I got to go tend to baby buddy. You guys have a great night. Bye, guys. Rabbit salad.